Dear Evergreen Community, I'm writing to let you know that Rashida Love, Director of First People's Multicultural Advising Services, has resigned from Evergreen effective today, November 15th. I want to recognize Rashida's tremendous contributions to the college and thank her for her service and outstanding work on behalf of Evergreen. Candy Bowman will be joining Evergreen as the interim director of First People's Multicultural Advising Services starting November 27th. Candy most recently served as the director of advising and counseling at the South Puget Sound Community College, having previously served as the director of student life at SPSCC. I also want to announce that Kamara Blackhorn will be assuming the multicultural advisor position in First People's effective November 20, a vacancy created when Mimi Alcantar left to begin graduate study in Hawaii. Kamara has served as an academic and career advisor since January, having previously been program coordinator for the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Center at SPSCC. Candy and Kamara will join Amir Kalua, Trans and Queer Center Coordinator, Raquel Salinas, First People's Coordinator of Student Support Programs, and Jackie McClinney, SAS Secretary Lead, as well as student peer as well as student peer paraphernals, student peer paraprofessionals, damn it, as well as student peer paraprofessionals in supporting students through First People's services and programs. Finally, I want to extend my gratitude to all the staff and faculty who have reached out and shown up to provide support to the First People staff and student community over the past six months. Your care and commitment to supporting our students and your colleagues has helped tremendously during a time of significant transition. Best regards, Jamie Cooper. Now, I'm looking into Candy Beaumont, but I found a bunch on Kamara Blackhorn. So. Most notably, Kamara Blackhorn was previously the program coordinator for the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Center at the Community College just down the road. And I found an email from her dated March 5th, 2014. Subject, staff, faculty, and administrators of color happy hour. The Diversity and Equity Advisory Committee invites you to dun, 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 Staff, Faculty, and Administrators of Color Happy Hour, an off-campus get-together to build support and community for people of color employed at SPSCC. Email somebody to be signed up for a confidential asterisk email list where we will notify participants of the date, time, and location of our happy hour. Lunches and other gatherings coming up. Questions. I am not a person of color. Can I attend anyway? Italicized. No. Period. The space we are working to create is not for allies, but for community support and development. If you are interested in supporting your colleagues, we will be ramping up allyship development trainings for the whole campus, and we recommend you check out the resources on the DEC website. You can also contact the Diversity and Equity Center to request trainings, support for you and your departments. To learn more about these options, please contact somebody. Question. What about white people happy hour? Answer. If you want to create space for white folks to meet and work on racism, white supremacy, and white privilege to better our campus community and yourselves, please feel free to do just that. Question. Can partners come? Answer. Absolutely. This is about community building, not a meeting. There's one question that I would like to ask. Can partners that are white come? But there's no answer to that. I'm not going to make it up because of the integrity of what I do here. This is the asterisk. Why are we keeping the contacts and location confidential? Many members of our communities face discrimination, fear, and historically have not felt supported as a minority in many institutions. We know that these folks need support and space just as much as those of us who feel safe in publicly organizing, being connected and respected, and are often seeking community but unsure where to find it. So we decided to provide the option to keep your involvement interest confidential, including blind copy emails, agreements of confidentiality set at each meetup, and we can remove you from the list at any time that you request. So. 
um, that was actually sent by Kamara Blackhorn on behalf of Diversity and Equity email listserv, I guess, back in 2014. As you might imagine, the internet got a hold of that, and a bunch of like blog posts were written about that email, and I believe that this happy hour was canceled. Um, so she's been working on her MPA, or Master's of Public Administration, Master's degree um, at Evergreen, and she's just now been hired as the uh, coordinator of the First Peoples Multicultural um, Advisory uh, Committee thing. Uh, so many acronyms. Uh, anyway, so I found an interview of her that she did earlier this year um, after the protests. And I want to point out that um, going through the interview, like she does have uh, a very good intention to help her community. And she defines her community basically as the queer community. And this video is not to be construed as me arguing for or against the queer community. It's to highlight the manner in which she defines things, especially um, identity and inclusion, and then what she thinks the role of that she is taking in influencing um, education is to be. I want to hyphenate that. And um, so I did edit this down, and the link to the entire interview is down in the description. Here you go. Uh, again, my name is Connor. I'm a Blackhorn, and um, I uh, identify as uh, a dyke, as queer, as two-spirit, as a poor-ass kid working my way through, um, as an educated person, as mixed, as indigenous. Now, you identify as two-spirit, mm -hmm. and you are part indigenous or I'm fully indigenous, fully indigenous. yeah okay I mean I'm mixed mm -hmm. so yeah. and yeah. I got a white dad and a native mom okay so um, right yeah. like I don't yeah. stop being one thing because I'm another thing mm -hmm. um, unless I unless my community forces me to, to because I can't not stop being a dyke and being a dyke to me is like working class like woman loving woman I feel like I'm just a queer uh, like a career queer and I'm trying to find a way to get paid to do gay shit and native wherever I can and somehow education is where it all happens and yeah. it just but mm -hmm. also like yeah. being you know queer as fuck and and being like gender non-conforming and and yeah. being like trans leaning and cis leaning and and two-spirit and all of these things all at once coexist and I think as the older I get and the more I see how each can support each other mm -hmm. and I don't have to be one thing or another or they don't have to be in opposition the more, um, the more whole I can feel, and I think the more I can appreciate my body for exactly what it is, and okay. um, my spirit especially for exactly what it is, um, and how it can be healing to me and to other peoples to be able to have this whole like jambalaya of everything all at once. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's it synergizes each other, right? Like um, being Kwachi or being like two spirit is one part of my identity, and being a a dyke is another part of my identity, being queer is part of my identity, and rather than mm. letting one um, be silenced or forgotten, which I think is the end goal of colonization and all these kind of right. things. Racism completely and utterly designs our gender, um, mm. and colonization completely and utterly designs our genders. And when I say gender, I don't mean um, our performance, right. and I don't mean um, the ways that we um, perceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean it more in like, I think in the ways that I've been taught is more in the way of the commitment and role you have for your community. Um, okay. And each of us come with a different kind of spirit and energy that we have to bring to the community. And sometimes mm -hmm. we are super limited by the ways that we can perceive that. Um, and we're yeah. limited yeah. by you know masculine or feminine or um, going from masculine to feminine or trying to construct something outside of it but we only understand how to think in one way or trying to, right, you know, right. so I think... Um, well, because all of that is culturally yeah. determined. Yeah, and we have a cultural, and, yeah. like, oppression, right? Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. this, like, white middle class, like, kind of oppression of their culture causes all of us to have to think about our gender in this very, like, yeah. screwed up way. And as queer people, like, we don't exist in education. Um, so a, a lot of this, I think a lot of good retention programs 
like integrate cultural issues, integrate cultural power, right. and integrate identity, like identity-focused education, so that people can see themselves in education, can un learn to understand themselves better, and find strength in their identity, and strength in their community, so they can deal with all of the microaggressions, and racism, right. and all this other shit that's existing constantly, when you're just trying to learn math, or yeah. <laughs> writing, yeah. so, um, like at the very beginning, they spoke about this spiritual place, this beautiful place, the fact that truth is multiplicity, that everyone has a different experience. Do not forget that. Institutions are telling you to always remember that this is academic, intellectual, it's in your head. This is in your heart. This is in your spirit. This is the strength that we truly have. The academics help us articulate it, and that is it. How can we develop social justice skills and, and, and toolkits and mm -hmm. identity awareness? Uh, and how can we integrate history, um, queerness in um, STEM fields, and queerness in, in you know, literature. Like the only way to retain us is to get us into like gender studies classes, um, instead of letting yeah, us just like yeah. go be a coral reef scientist or something, you know? Like yeah. we spend yeah. so much time and energy teaching LGBTQ 101 to a whole bunch of ignorant people when we should be teaching our students yeah. to become those people that take their jobs. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and there are so few queer people in higher education that have the skills, abilities, and drive to do this kind of work right. that it's hard as hell to recruit. And yeah. like the people that we can recruit are the people who are most privileged and are like mostly just white women and and cis. And mm -hmm. while that's amazing that they're willing to do stuff, that defeats the point of right. what we are trying to organize. A lot of our a lot of people in our community and and lots of queer communities from what I've heard, you know. Um, think that we need to change our organizations to be more inclusive. Mm -hmm. We need to be more intentional about who we do outreach to. We need to do all these like actions that are going to make it better. And I think the reality is, just like any other system, it you can't just make it more inclusive. You need to change the entire damn structure of it. And okay. you need to change the purpose of it. And mm -hmm. I think if you say the purpose is a celebration, we need it to be more inclusive. The purpose will not bring you the right people and it will not be sustained. The purpose mm -hmm. should be racial justice, it should be liberation, and it can be done in a form of celebration. And it can be done, okay. and done in, a, in a way of, um, you know, education or whatever it is. But if your core focus isn't Okay. actually going to support the needs and histories and reconciliation of our like queer cultural clashes then it's not going to actually like inclusivity is this weird white yeah. man term yeah it is it just it just further yeah. supports um that like this is the norm and we need to find a way to get you to fit into the norm it's more like it's like this is our organization and we're going to open the door and let you in yeah. not not, not rip the is, house down and rebuild yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what I think that's like kind of like where our community is going, intentionally or unintentionally, is starting to rip down the walls of things and try to yeah. rebuild. And I think that's the only way that we're going to actually change. Mm -hmm. Like what we've been doing a lot of this for so long, mm -hmm. like generations and generations and generations, and still white gay men like run <laughs> the world, yeah. and 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 it, it just no amount of bringing us in right will be sustainable yeah yeah you know i feel like a lot of time that the the downfall to the education is when it's like a whole bunch of majority population people mm -hmm. trying to ask minorities to teach them about their ways right like yeah. that's it needs yeah. to be equalized in a better way yeah um and i think education and community organizations have a lot to do to learn how to do that and it comes mm -hmm. back to that like thing about like our organizations like we need right. to stop being inclusive right. inclusive isn't the answer right. it's like saying ending bullying in schools is going to end oppression it's not yeah. it's just a systematic or just like a symptomatic like mm -hmm. band-aid situation yeah. and a lot of our school systems never knew what that means and will probably never care in the way that they need to until we take it over yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. is that some of the most important education is what takes place outside of the classroom. Yeah. You know, and, and it's and it's you know, sometimes the greatest value of a school is that it brings together people who can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. You know, not necessarily from the professors, although they you know, they can be very valuable, but yeah. you know, learn about all the experiences of all the people around you that are so different from your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so all like I went to Evergreen as an undergraduate, and 
um, loved it. I got to do so much stuff, and I studied critical race and, and sexuality mm -hmm. studies. Yeah. Um, so I got to do stuff like take over Jake's after um, uh, somebody was attacked by a straight guy in the bar, like her and her girlfriend were attacked. And so we took over the streets and like yeah. marched through it yeah. and got credit for it. It was great. Education is such a liberating place if you are willing to fight and like build community. Um, yeah. And so that's why I've just kind of kept doing education it just it, it, it for I think for students of color it gives a great opportunity if there's people there or it's it can be toxic it's for queer people it can be toxic mm -hmm. unless there's people there right like I think yeah, yeah. so it was so good and so toxic being a student so I just keep coming back and it's really exciting to be back at Evergreen and in the first week of being there we had the day of absence day of presence mm -hmm. and since then um, which is where like you know uh, white students leave campus go talk about um, race and, and racism and, and allyship and all these kind of things and students of color stay on campus and get to talk about like uh, similar issues um, right. yeah. and, and cultural empowerment and engagement and going in more depth um, and then all of this stuff has been blowing up at Evergreen where white people felt like they were attacked for yeah. being you know like it's just it's been so wild so my I've been there for about like yeah. a month and a half and mm -hmm. half of it's all been just like madness and it's great i love it yeah. students took over the whole campus fighting yeah. for what they needed to mm -hmm. there was black and trans students that like are changing this campus yeah. to be amazing yeah. even i remember at pride last year i took off my shirt mm -hmm. um and somebody freaked out on me mm -hmm. like somebody was uncomfortable with me taking off my shirt i'm a goddamn dyke and it's pride i'm allowed yeah. to be ass naked and you're supposed to clap like yep. that's what's supposed to happen don't tell me yeah. to like censor my body like yep. we fight so hard all year long to just just be ourselves that yeah. we should be able to yeah. celebrate our sexuality and right. I want some more spankings in the street and I want some more like leather daddies at every exactly event. I miss like, the guys in the yeah. buttless leather chaps yeah. and I know that we're supposed to like try to make straight people straight cis people like us more mm -hmm. but I really think at this point there's so many of well, us it, you know, that even, we could just win without yeah, them and, he, and if we keep catering to people who've been oppressing us yeah. then we ain't gonna get nowhere and of course like, that's a very deep very old problem with yeah. white culture yes is that erotophobia yeah, yeah it just but like yeah. from like even just when I was like 15 mm -hmm. pride and queerness and everything was sexy it was sexy to be yeah. queer and yeah. now it's like I don't know it's like a giant placenta or something like it's just like it's just like <laughs> we gave birth to something sexy now there's this thing that like probably has nutrients but I don't necessarily want to take it home a lot of people who are living those lives with parents and families and like kind of having that immersive experience that are afraid of queers wandering with no shirt mm -hmm. um, they're living a very different life than what we need to live um, mm -hmm. so like yeah. what what my experience of queerness is is very different than the mom who's afraid of me um, yeah. You know, and, and I think if we keep centering the people with the most privilege in our communities. I know, yeah. We're yeah. never going to get anywhere. Yeah. And that's, that's why nothing's right. changed except for the desexualization. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We got to bring the sexy back. What I've seen be the most powerful situations um, in, in organizing is the moment when somebody just tries to do exactly what they care about in exactly the way they care about doing it. Um, without thinking that yeah. there's a right way or a wrong way or a right kind of person to be and just bravely doing whatever they can to be themselves as loud and as and as powerful as they can. Um, I think we need more people who aren't supposed to be there in that way, like mm -hmm. those riff raffs, those <laughs> like adorable perverts, those troublemakers. Like, troublemakers. We need so yeah. many more troublemakers to so come yeah. and be troublemakers. I think that would be my my message is um, you don't have to blend in even though I think queerness tells us that we have to now mm. in a lot of ways in that dominant way. You have to be fully you and bring all of you and find what that means. Um, and it's okay to take breaks and it's okay to dip out and it's okay to come back. No, I think that's all I got.